I gotta ramble about about Hi-Fi Rush now. So with Hi-Fi Rush, this is a game that I nobody was expecting. I've been praising it ever since I, I started playing it. I haven't really had anything else to say other than just it's amazing. But trying to actually get all of my thoughts together with it is really hard because I have enjoyed myself so much with this and I feel like I'm on like cloud nine whenever I've been playing this. Like even in those moments where it gets stressful, it still feels amazing and it feels fun and it feels fair. I started on hard because I thought that that was an appropriate difficulty for me and I was correct. Going into it with action game experience, I feel like it, hard was the right choice because I had my pre I have my previous experience. I would like to think that I'm fairly decent at these kinds of games. But the thing that made this challenging for me was adjusting to the way that Hi-Fi Rush wants me to play, which is the rhythm-based timings and um, trying to actually like figure out all the different timings with the enemies and the parries and time it with music. And I think that's really where the challenge of hard mode comes in. And I think that's why I really, really liked this and why it really resonated with me. I mentioned it in uh, one of my earlier videos, I think it was the last one that I did, where um, it sort of feels like how I played DMC3 for the first time. And even though I had some experience with it, it's the uniqueness of it and the challenge that actually makes it super interesting, where you can't just do whatever you want. You have to actually go with the flow of the game in order to, uh, in order to do well. And I think the, in this game specifically, quite literally, if you are off beat with the rhythm of the game, you will get punished for it. And I think that was very prevalent with uh, with Kale because I wasn't necessarily paying attention at first to how his attack patterns were. And this happened to me with uh, two other bosses as well. I was just kind of like doing my own thing. But once I actually like shut my, like shut everything up in here, just sat down and listened to the actual rhythm and beat of his attacks, that's when I feel like I started to do well, and that's when I feel like I was actually making a dent in in the fights, uh, especially the boss fights. And I think that's what really makes this fun and special. I think that there is so much love and detail and attention and character put into this game that comparing it to every other action game that I have played is almost virtually impossible. I feel like I haven't had this much fun with an action game since Devil May Cry 5. And I feel like the, I can't even really compare that <laughs> really because DMC5 is a culmination of all of the Devil May Cry games, including the reboot, that just fit perfectly into that one game. Whereas this is a completely different experience that mixes up the, the genre of the character action to, to this extent. I have two, very minor complaints about this game. And even then, they are incredibly nitpicky. First thing that I've been mentioning this entire time is that I really, really, really wish there was a lock on. Just to have, just to have as an option, just to see what it would be like. Because even though I'm able to move the camera around with the right stick, I feel like there's so much to concentrate on that I also also having to worry about the camera too is just kind of unfortunate as an unfortunate side effect. I don't know how easy it would be to put in a lock on. If there's a way to mod a lock on in so I could just see how it feels, I would greatly appreciate it, but it's not there when everything else that is customizable in this game is. So that's really the only thing that I would like to see. The second thing, which I can't even really fault this game for, is that the air mobility is just a little bit weird and something that I'm not used to. But I think that might be because I am forcing, I'm trying to force the game to be an air mobility game when I should also be focusing on the ground as well. Cause Chai doesn't have any jump cancels or anything like that. He just has his air combos that you can loop. This game really isn't made to play be played in the air, I don't think. And I am an air mobility kind of person. I play Marvel, I play Devil May Cry, I play Bayonetta, I love my jump cancels. 
So it's a little bit weird to have to get readjusted back to that. And I feel like that's something that I have to spend some time if I wanna get better at this game. Everything else, the actual story, and the way that all of the characters present themselves, the fact that they're all named after cheese, it's basically like, like tea versus like mimosas. <laughs> oh yeah, um, you know, the ongoing joke with the decaf coffee, there's all the small references and like even like, you know, the Twin Peaks reference, the, uh, the Xenogear reference, I didn't even know were references. I still laughed incredibly hard when I saw those two and I had no idea what those were. Like I said, this game has so much personality and and charisma into it with all the hidden details. Uh, it, it This really truly feels like a passion project and I've, I've, I've been saying it this entire time, I'm going to say it again. They do not make games like this anymore. Really, the, the way that I feel about this game is the way that I felt about every single game that I was playing when I was a kid. And I grew up in that like 2000s to 2012-ish era of video games. This is exactly what this feels like. And if you're a fan of those kinds of games, you will love Hi-Fi Rush. Hell, if you were a fan of video games, you will love Hi-Fi Rush. Like, Hi-Fi Rush is the most video game video game that you could probably play. You know, next to like Mario. And, and Sonic for like the action, not even just the action genre, but just if you like video games, you're probably going to like Hi-Fi Rush. That's that's really where my recommendation with it is. And I feel like giving that sort of recommendation to where I could like realistically go to almost any single person that I know who plays video games and go, hey, I think you might enjoy this, really says a lot about the quality of Hi-Fi Rush. I was literally having a conversation with somebody the other day after we were playing Melee, and I was just raving about Hi-Fi Rush like it was the second coming of Jesus Christ. And literally as I'm talking to this person, they bought the game. Like, it is that easily recommendable with the rhythm, like the rhythm timings, with just the way that the game presents itself, the graphics, like the style of the art and just the game in general. It is so easy to recommend this game to everybody. And did I mention that it is $30 in this day and age of 2023 video gaming, where we have video games that are priced at $70 right now for console exclusives, and not even just console exclusives, but other shit too. Like the deluxe edition of this game is $40. And it's just a $10 increase. And you know what? Like I just bought the standard version of this game, but I'm probably gonna buy the deluxe edition and spend the extra $10 just to support this game because of how amazing it is. So if I if I did not give anything other than a numbered score, um, this would be the highest score I could probably give it. Like if it was like a Jeremy Johns Awesome Tacular or if it was like a, uh, a Chris Stuckman A plus or whatever, um, any sort of wacky ratings, I would give it the highest I could probably give. But because I do numbered scores, because I've been like just doing that, Hi-Fi Rush is a 10 out of 10. Not even just a 10 out of 10, but a 10 out of 10 that I could recommend to pretty much anybody that enjoys playing video games. And, and that's my final thoughts and my final take on it. Tango. You guys did an awesome job. I want to I want to get the the director's name uh, the director's name right again. John uh, Oh my god. It's like it's John Johannes. Yeah, John Johannes. Good job. Good job with this game. Shinji Mikami. Excellent work. I I'm sure that there is going to be some sort of sequel or DLC or something, but like I don't want to think about that. I just want to sit here and enjoy the masterpiece that we have right here right now and these guys did an, an excellent job. So you and your team should be extremely proud of yourselves. And I feel like I don't really say that as often where it's like, yeah, you guys did a good job. You should be proud. But like, no, seriously, like good, good job. I am very, very, very happy to recommend this game to literally anybody that will listen. Those are my thoughts on Hi-Fi Rush. And that is my, my final take on it. So. Yeah, go out and play Hi-Fi Rush if you haven't already, but I'm assuming <laughs> that if you are watching me, you are either already playing it right now, or you are planning on playing it in the near future. This this was truly, truly, truly something special, and I, um, they don't make games like this anymore. They really don't. 
I wish I wish they made more games like this.